Hey, it's Purple Insider Extra. Sam Ekstrom in for Matthew Collar today. Chad Graff of The Athletic Pinch Hitting joining our video. Welcome, Chad. What an honor. You know, I've always wanted to do this. I guess I'm going to have to channel my best caller, so uh, I'll be here with my hottest takes for you. Yeah, you're going to talk about Mac Jones for 10 minutes. <laughs> uh, today, the final practice before the second preseason game. They took it pretty easy today, and a lot of guys still out. Um, a couple of vet days today, it looked like Patrick Peterson was out as well, and a handful of others, but some of those are injury-related, and it seems like the injuries are stacking up right now, Chad. It's Anthony Barr, it's Tyler Conklin, Patrick Jones is dealing with something now, Kenny Wangwu. Um, are there any injuries that to you you think could be sort of crippling for this team going forward, or what's the most problematic in your mind? Yo, know, there's two I want to talk about, which are Tyler Conklin and Anthony Barr, but first I think you have to start with Anthony Barr. Mm -hmm. Barr has missed, uh, I guess we should go back and look at it, but it's something like six of the last 11 practices. This is starting to become a real thing. Mike Zimmer admitted as much this week that he's dealing with something. Um, he, he does his own work sort of in the training room and then comes out maybe 75% of the way through practice. And part of, you know, the hope and optimism around this defense is look at all the players that they're bringing back, um, all the players that they've signed, and also having Eric Hendricks and Anthony Barr healthy. We saw a year ago what this defense looks like when Barr and Kendricks are not healthy. Um, the fact that Barr is not going to play in Saturday's game, didn't play last week, I would imagine he's probably not going to play in the third preseason game. Like, this is starting to become a little bit worrisome to me, I think, when you look at the Vikings' hopes on defense. Um, and couple that with the fact that the linebacker depth just hasn't been very good. Like, one guy retired, another guy is hurt. Um, Nick Vigil is suddenly not practicing, and he's been, of the depth pieces, the best linebacker out there. Troy Dye has been up and down. Ryan Conway has been up and down. Chaz Surratt, I think you know, perhaps more down than up. So mm -hmm. it's not a spot where they have a ton of depth. And obviously we all know how much Anthony Barr means to Mike Zimmer's defense. And you mentioned Tyler Conklin too. I mean, that's the backup tight end on this team, Chad. And beyond him, I'm not sure we know who the number two is. It's either Brandon Dillon or Zach Davidson. And we were talking about a week ago, it just seems like Brandon Dillon hasn't been involved at all in practice. Zach Davidson's been elevated above him in a lot of reps. I asked Clint Kubiak about Zach Davidson yesterday, and he said he still has work to do. So I think you're, you're genuinely concerned about Tyler Conklin, too. This is a two-tight end office, offense. We don't know who the number two is right now. You said he's the backup. He's basically a starter, given how often they use two tight ends. And so I think when you look at the Vikings' roster as a whole, you realize it's pretty top-heavy. I think tight end is a great example of that, where Irv Smith Jr., Tyler Conklin, two steady players that I think you can trust. Then there's a really big gap to whether it's Brandon Dillon, maybe Shane Zilstra. I, I don't think so, but maybe Zach Davidson. I just talked to Zach Davidson yesterday for the first time. He reminded me, he played, he estimated, four or five snaps at tight end his entire high school career, went to college, estimated, you know, he had half a season as a backup and one season kind of as the guy. He just has not played tight end. Like, it's, you know, he's off the charts athleticism. There's reasons for optimism. Um, you could develop him. I think he could be a very good player in a couple of years. But the fact remains, he just hasn't played the position very much. Uh, and is there a chance going into week one he is the number two tight end? It's, it's hard to fathom. And yet... As you mentioned, Brandon Dillon hasn't done anything. Shane Zilstra, you know, I think has a ways to go just to, you know, be discussed for making the roster. So mm -hmm. we don't yet know how serious Tyler Conklin's apparent left leg injury is. But if it is serious, I think that's a big deal for the Vikings. Yeah, no doubt about it. And I want to circle back to something you mentioned in the previous uh, discussion about the linebackers. Cameron Smith retired suddenly on Wednesday night bringing kind of to a close what, what could have been a very inspirational and still was an inspirational story after he came back from heart surgery last year, got concussed in the preseason game uh, last Saturday, which um, in his words, I think he kind of came to a realization that he was putting his body under a lot of strain, and Mike Zimmer said today that he was pretty set on that decision. So I guess, Chad, put, put a bow on this Cam Smith story after a, a valiant comeback attempt. Crazy, crazy story going all the way back to last year when an initial false positive test for COVID 
um, means that he's got to undergo more testing and that's when they discover the heart issue and then he has open heart surgery and you know I think one of the best things that you can say for Cam Smith and his tenure with the Vikings however brief it may have been was after having open heart surgery a massive massive procedure he was at the facility every day he was working out with these guys he was in the meeting rooms with them dissecting game plans for games he obviously knew he wasn't going to be playing in um, I think that earned a lot of respect from his teammates uh, there's not a lot of bad things you can say about the guy. Of course, super unfortunate, the concussion, which, you know, leads to, I think, some tough questions for him. I don't know that he was necessarily going to make the 53-man, even if he had stayed through it. You know, that linebacker depth chart is very, very up in the air, as we have mentioned. Um, you know, but uh, I guess, you know, he mentioned that he wanted to take care of his body and mm -hmm. and applaud to him for for doing so yeah hats off to him for sure um in our final few minutes let's talk about everson griffin we are watching our phones watching twitter waiting for the press release to see if the vikings make this move official now we do know everson griffin was in the building yesterday he had a tryout with the team mike zimmer walked off stage today when asked about everson griffin not in a mood to talk about it and, and zimmer can be kind of surly sometimes i don't think we can judge that the tryout went badly because of that. I just think he doesn't like talking about anything uh, that's not official yet. So, Chad, does it become official? Does Everson Griffin join this defensive line? This is just purely a guess. I think it's, you know, it's amazing how much they've actually kept it under wraps. Mm -hmm. Griffin's side isn't saying anything. The Vikings' side aren't saying anything. So, you know, we're just completely speculating with this. But I would be surprised if he signs by within the next few days. I think the Vikings kind of brought him in here for a number of reasons. One, just let's see where he's at. Let's see if he's still got it. He didn't do much last year with the Cowboys. Let's see if he still has something. Two, this is a way to send a message, I think, to Stephen Weatherly, who has not been great these first few weeks. I think the Vikings, when they signed him to a one-year deal, kind of hoped that he was going to go out and just earn that job opposite to Neil Hunter. And instead, I think DJ Wanham's probably been just as good there and has an argument to be made going into these last two preseason games. And then third, I think you always want somebody kind of on the back burner that if you have some injuries, if something unexpected happens, you can call and quickly get the ball rolling. So I think that's probably what happened with Hunter. Patrick Jones, now the defensive end, uh, he's hurt. So I think if there is maybe one more injury, a deal gets done, if the Vikings get through Saturday and they're in here evaluating the tape on Sunday and Stephen Weatherly didn't play very well, if DJ Wanham didn't play very well, maybe that propels you to sign him. But at least entirely a guess, and this could look awfully <laughs> silly uh, when you're watching this if they've already signed him, but I don't think they'll sign him in the next 72 hours. Interesting. Now, a new theory that I've kind of hatched is, is this a response to whatever Pat Patrick Jones' injury is? Because presumably, Patrick Jones might be your fourth defensive end. Um, and if he's going to be out for any amount of time, you need bodies in there. I mean, you've got Janarius Robinson, who's a pretty raw rookie, um, and you know DJ Wanham and Stephen Weatherly have struggled. You need bodies that can play. And you know whether Jones' injury has anything to do with this or not, I think that having someone like Griffin, who knows the system, who obviously has a, or had a lot of talent, you hope you can harness it with Andre Patterson in his ear, um, that might be preferable on, I'm, I'm assuming, a very small contract to somebody like Jalen Holmes, who just hasn't unlocked anything here, or Hercules Mata'afa. So I, I don't know about the timeline, Chad, but I think eventually Everson Griffin will be signing here, and we could be wrong. Well, last thoughts. We, I guess, my final thought would be: we know that Everson Griffin has wanted to come back. He kind of made that pretty clear throughout the off season. My only remaining question for him, and I think this would have to be a very frank conversation with Mike Zimmer, Andre Patterson, maybe Rick Spielman, and Everson Griffin: is he okay with just being a third down guy? Because there's a chance that is, you know, what he would be, depending on, mm -hmm. you know, whether he can beat out Wanham or Weatherly or whatever. There's a chance he'd just be a third down guy. And for somebody who's been a star for so many years, it's not an easy thing. We've seen some Vikings do it well, some not, but it's not an easy thing to go from being the guy to suddenly being a backup and trying to help younger players. So I think that they would at least have to let Everson Griffin know that that could be his role. And that's the role they're asking Sheldon Richardson to play this year as well. Kind of interesting how they're, they're getting these veterans to potentially take on these smaller roles. Uh, he's Chad Graff. 
at The Athletic. Follow him on Twitter. Is it at Chad Graff? Nice and simple, at Chad Graff. At Chad Graff. Uh, give him a follow. It's another Purple Insider Extra. Listen to the podcasts wherever you get your podcasts, and check out the website, purpleinsider.com.